Okay, I find that sometimes students struggle with uh, kind of more um, not 90 degree angles in terms of these. Um, so I'm going to do one example using C3B. Uh, so just our classic ammonia molecule that we've been talking a lot about in class. So ammonia is C3B. And we know the symmetry operations that it has are E, C3, C3, 2, and then we have three sigma Vs. Um, so I'll just define it here in the same way that we did in class. So let's have H, H, H. Um, and this will be H1, H2, H3. And then so, of course, our C3 axis is down the middle. So we must, again, define a clear coordinate system that we'll use throughout this exercise. So for the purposes of this exercise, I'm going to call this z, x, and y. And then here, we're going to have x and then y in this kind of overhead view I'm doing here. So there's our c3. And then again, let's, let's do c3 will be counterclockwise just for consistency's sake. So again, be very consistent in when you define your directions. Otherwise, your matrices aren't going to work out. OK. So um, let's see. So our first, let's call this sigma v1. And then this will be sigma v2. And this will be sigma v3. So what we want to do is, again, we want to figure out how to represent each symmetry operation. So our symmetry operation. So again, these are all our symmetry operations. We have six of them. We should end up with six three by three matrices. And then so we want to figure out what they are that can turn x, y, z into our new x prime, y prime, z prime. So from our last class, uh, I mentioned that we already know what the E matrix is. So we know that E is always going to be 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And that's because this is the only matrix that can turn x, y, z into x, y, z by itself. So the other ones are maybe a little bit more complicated. So let's do sigma v1. So this is this horizontal mirror plane along the x-axis that contains the x-axis and the z-axis, just in this picture. So it's going into, into the board where my hands are. So to figure out how this transforms, let's start with our x and y basis. Okay, and then just to be clear, I'm showing you how to derive sigma v1. So sigma v1, remember our mirror plane is along this x-axis. So what we know is that x prime is going to be equal to x. So x prime is here. But y is going to be mirrored across. So again, y is going to turn into here. So this is y prime. So y prime equals negative y. x prime equals x z prime equals z, because again, it contains it. So x and, y are, x and z are unchanged. y is mirrored. So therefore, uh, for this matrix, we must know that sigma v1 is going to be 1, 0, 0, because x is unchanged, 0, minus 1, 0, because y is uh, you know, negative of itself, and then z is 0, 0, 1. OK, so that's sigma v1. For sigma v2, Again, let me draw our x and y vectors. And so this is because, again, all the sigma v's contain the z-axis. So that's why it's easier for me to draw just the x and y. So sigma v2 is along this kind of one-third uh, direction. So if we kind of think about where it should be, so it's here. Remember, this is 90 degrees, so this has got to be 30 degrees. So time for some trig. 30 degrees, and this is 60 degrees. So this is our mirror plane of sigma v2. So let's think about what x prime and y prime should be once they are mirrored across this plane, or I guess in this case, this line. So this must mean that x prime is going to have to be 60 degrees also. x prime. 
So this is gonna be 60 degrees. 60 degrees. And then, oh, <laughs> I guess if that, that picture doesn't really look like 60 degrees, but it is. And then y prime is mirrored across this line, so y prime must be 30 degrees this way. So 30 degrees. Okay. Um, let me kind of continue on our original coordinate system just so you can see. Okay, so what that means is that this is at a 30 degree angle. So anyway, so to do some trig, um, this prime is going to have to be equal to negative 1 half x. If, so if you remember your unit circle, our uh, cosine of 30 is 1 half. No, sorry, sine of 30 is 1 half. So here's 30. So x is negative 1 half x minus root 3 over 2 y. So if you just see how this vector has changed. So negative 1 half and then root 3 over 2 going down. Similarly, y prime is going to be equal to, so this is at this sort of 60 degree angle. So y prime is going to, this vector, if you try it on the unit circle, this vector, if you look at where the cosine and the sine are. So y prime is going to be negative root 3 over 2 x at the end pointing up is positive 1 half y. So we're just using unit circle and figuring out what directions these vectors are pointing. So this is our, our final x, y. And we know that z prime is going to be equal to, uh, I'll show it over here, z prime equals z because that mirror plane contains the z axis. So what this means is that overall our matrix is going to be equal to sigma v2 equals, here's our matrix. So x prime equals negative 1 half times x minus root 3 over 2 this is the second element, and then plus 0z, so 0 over here. y prime is negative root 3 over 2x plus 1 half y, 0z, and z is just 0x plus 0y, 1z. So this is our sigma v2. Um, and then uh, without derivation, I'll let you do it in class, or I'll make you do it in class. Our sigma v3 is therefore going to be uh, it's, so it's approaching the same way. You want to figure out where the x and y vectors go. Um, I'll write it down, but I'll, I'm, I'm going to make you do it in class. So it is negative 1 half root 3 over 2, 0 root 3 over 2, 1 half, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay. Um, and then, so for the same thing is when you want to figure out what C3 looks like, we can do the exact same thing. So if we start off with our x and y vectors, so C3 again contains the z-axis, and then we want to rotate 120 degrees counterclockwise, so then we know that our x prime is going to be here, x prime, and our y prime will be here. And so that's our 120-degree uh, rotation uh, going counterclockwise. So let me draw my 90-degree angles again so we can figure this out. And then so because x prime is going kind of upward like that by 120 degrees, we know that x prime must equal negative 1 half x plus root 3 over 2 y. And then y prime over here equals negative root 3 over 2 x. So it's negative root 3 over 2 going in the x direction, minus 1 half in the y. So this matrix is going to be equal to C3 equals negative 1 half plus root 3 over 2, 0, negative root 3 over 2, negative 1 half, 0. And again, because it contains a z-axis, it's 0, 0, 1 in the last row. And then C3, 2 equals, if we again rotate, another 120 degrees, this is going to be equal to, I wrote it down, hold on, this way. So this is 60 degrees, 60 degrees, okay, negative 1 half, negative root 3 over 2, 0. This rotates 120 degrees over here, so this will be um, root 3 over 2. one half, zero, or negative one half, zero, 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 one. Okay, so this is our, our matrices for all our six different symmetry operations, our two C3s, 
our three sigma v's, one, two, three, and then our E matrix. And so this is not the most kind of convenient way to represent all your symmetry operations. So one thing I want to point out is, um, uh, so what we do instead is, um, from last class, we were able to combine subsets of our symmetry operations into classes by elements that are conjugate to each other. And the reason this is important is because uh, conjugate operations, conjugate elements, I guess we'll call them, have the same character chi. So what is a character? The character is the sum of the diagonals here. So here's our diagonal. That's a negative. So this is negative 1 half plus negative 1 half plus 1 is 0. So here chi equals 0. And then you can see the diagonal for C3, negative 1 half, negative 1 half, 1, this diagonal is also 0. Negative 1 half, negative 1 half, that's chi equals 0. And we know from our last class is that C3 and C3, 2 are in the same class. They're conjugate to each other. So they must have the same chi. Um, similarly, if we look at the character for our mirror planes, this negative 1 half, 1 half, 1. So this chi equals 1. And you can see here, here's our sigma v3. Chi also equals 1. And then here's our last sigma v, 1 minus 1 plus 1. So chi equals 1. And then we said that identity is always in the class by itself. And so chi equals 3. And that's why it's, it, we must know what elements are conjugate to each other because we can group them together. They all have the same character. And this comes to play later on when we work with molecular orbitals, character tables. So yes. I, I do want to point out, though, that it, some classes can have the same character but be, still be in different classes. So it's not saying that if we had another group with, cl with class 1 that they're same, in the same class. You must do the similarity transform in order to, to be sure. But uh, still, we can group and have the character um, to kind of represent the entire matrix with. So it's very useful.